On April 17, 1975, the Communist Party of Kampuchea, otherwise known as the Khmer Rouge, took control of Cambodia. Under the leadership of Pol Pot, one of modern history's most infamous dictators, the Khmer Rouge ruled Cambodia for the next three years. In January 1979, the Khmer Rouge was ousted by forces from neighbouring Vietnam, but continued to operate from their jungle camp at the Thai-Cambodian border until Pol Pot's death in 1998, at which time the Khmer Rouge's political and military structures were finally dismantled. It is estimated that 1.7 million Cambodians, one-fifth of Cambodia's total population, died from diseases, starvation, malnutrition, exhaustion or execution during the Khmer Rouge's rule. Thirty years later, the psychological legacy inflicted by the regime runs deep into the lives of many Cambodians, as people are still struggling with the question of how to live with their terrifying experiences. Inga Aga is a psychologist and a senior researcher at the Rehabilitation and Research Centre for Torture Victims in Copenhagen. For the last two years, Inga has conducted research on how survivors of the Khmer Rouge regime have lived and dealt with the traumatic events they experienced. Inga has looked at how Cambodians experience justice and healing, and how they are dealing with the healing processes from several perspectives, a religious, a legal, and a professional therapeutic approach. She has interviewed Buddhist monks and nuns about their perspective of justice and healing and looked at the significance of religious ceremonies and rituals for the healing of trauma. She has asked victims about their experience of the Western-inspired transitional justice process going on at the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia, commonly known as the Khmer Rouge Tribunal. She has also looked at professional mental health activities for victims of the Khmer Rouge carried out by the Transcultural Psychosocial Organization, TPO. Phan So Chan was 16 years old when the Khmer Rouge took over Phnom Penh. Along with millions of others, her and her family were forced to leave the city and sent to the countryside. Phan's father was a teacher and her family therefore identified as new people. Being so, her father was further labelled a traitor and put in jail, where he was tortured and left starving to death. Fan also lost her mother, two brothers and a sister, who similarly died of starvation and exhaustion. Today Fan is a devoted nun, living a life in solitude at the sacred Kulen mountain. <laughs> ខាងដែរប៉ុន្តែដល់ពេលយើងរស់នៅក្នុង <coughs> ແລະຄັ້ງກໍຈັ່ງສໍລຸດຍ້າຍດາຕາລຸດຍ້າຍດາຊ່ວຍສົງຄູຊົນລົງຄູສາລະບົບໄມ້ກະຫອມໃສ
đại kết hướng từ ở tây tây cao với nhé hướng cho nó ăn khoai cao mấy đứa cò hướng năng lượng dây tục đại lai lên kết về tiền hải các tập về khai dân cận chẳng đại quan tha sát na bọc bẩn về mình miền cao chia bát này về ruộng nơi đây dân squal sát na bọc bẩn nước squal nơi squal khôn ai nơi khôn ai squal pi từng bờ bọc khôn ai squal nơi con nơi thoa sờ thoa bọc khôn ai đăng thà đôi chân nón po po chăng bờ sân chia po po rư môi nẹt để thơ sầm ao kê sầm lạp chăng ban đấy thà vì trời squal khôn ai nhớ nơi con nơi thoa nơi sờ thoa khôn ai nữa cha đôi bộ bút sát na chăng lúc giờ giờ thà giờ thì thoa nó giờ thì thoa bạt nạ đấy cái chia giờ thì thoa đại phép smart trăng với thà chia giờ thì thoa bật đó nè, xem ra bị chia chuẩn khai chuẩn đại ban thờ nâng xà đại phép hơi tụt tua cùng họ tam tổ đại kê thờ bồi chập bập bồi sát na chẳng đấy attempting to erase traditional Cambodian culture, religion and values, the Khmer Rouge regime declared death to Buddhism. By suppressing the sense of meaning among communities, the Khmer Rouge believed that they could clear the grounds by turning Cambodia back to the year zero and building a new revolutionary culture. The majority of monks living through the Khmer Rouge regime were either forced to disrobe or died of disease or starvation, while others were executed. Over half of the temples in the country were damaged or demolished. During the Khmer Rouge, Pim Sem and all other monks at Wat Bo were forced to disrobe and leave the pagoda and sent to the countryside to do slave labour in the fields. The Khmer Rouge forces took base at the pagoda, which they partly converted to an auto-mechanic garage and partly destroyed. After the fall of the Khmer Rouge, Pim came back to Wat Bo to rebuild the pagoda and is head of monks here today. ในยางคลั่งทางเช่นไปซักเคยสกรรมเพียบระบบผู้ขมายกับหอมนั้นเวียอักระอุ้งใส่ขึ้นทับผู้อันนั้นเวียอัดเมียนมนุษย์เธอ
Today, an estimated 90% of the Cambodian population are Thavada Buddhists. Prak Kim Lee is 68 years old and has been a nun for the past 18 years. She is now the head of nuns at the Udong Vipassana Center. During the Khmer Rouge, she was forced out of her home, separated from her family, and lost both her husband and son. By becoming a nun, Prak sought to set herself free from suffering and calm her emotions. <laughs> ຈ້າຈ້ານະມາຮຽນນະຮຽນທໍວິປັດສະນາຍິດທໍອົບລົມພະຈິດນະຈ້າຈ້ານະຍັງໃຫ້ມັນກໍຫຼາຍໃຫ
I don't have a lot of expectation of the court. Uh, I hope that it, it is a process that all of us can learn from because justice is served by us, individual, not court. 30 years after the fall of the Khmer Rouge, the 001 case of Kang Gek Eo, better known as Doik, is the only sentence to have been passed. The system of the court was supposed to be a model for future international criminal tribunals. Yet for years the court has been dogged by claims of political interference, inefficiency and long delays. The hybridism of the court has given rise to formal disputes between the international judges and lawyers and their local counterparts. Two international judges have resigned over government pressure in the court process, citing the interference of top leaders in the government, who themselves are former members of the Khmer Rouge. Critical voices at the tribunal claim that by only trying a few senior leaders, there will be no real justice for the victims. Min Horn is 61 years old and works as a tailor. When the Khmer Rouge abducted her husband in 1974, she was pregnant. She then witnessed the execution of her two brothers. The anger and tension she feels towards the Khmer Rouge remains, which is why Min has applied to become a civil party member in case 002. <coughs> Praxinan is 57 years old. She and her husband are farmers. During the Khmer Rouge, she was forced from her village to work in a mobile unit and was later put in prison. She lost her grandparents, her father and two brothers during that time. She never managed to finish school and feels she lost all her hopes for the future. For these reasons, Prak has applied to become a civil party member in case 002. <coughs> 
chẳng mình chẳng ai nè đặt ngon thằng ai nâng nè đẹp bẹp bón cắt tô chẳng cắt tô là việc nào đấy cắt tô này khi nhôm mình mén chọn ok sầm lấp nè thằng ông nó khi nhôm mình mén chọn cam chọn pi ok sầm lấp to to nó phủ nó chọn ok tại cái miên tô chấm phu một cái chia bơ rót miên tô chấm phu một chia bơ rót miên chọn miên này tham mấy đấy chọn thà ok nâng chạy miền tô chóp nó không còn thằng này kia bậc ca ôi bị chia bờ rót từng ao đăng thang kê miền tô đôi sa ca đặc nom mình lọ thưa ba bị chia bờ rót luôn ai cả lại phụ sa tóc chi ai cả sa rồi cả tóc chi chả tóc chi ai cả sa đâm bay ôi mình thằng cày ban sắc sa đăng thang ẩm phơi dùng non rồi bỏ chân kia là nhà nào Victims can participate in the trial as civil parties. This is the first time that victims of mass atrocity have been allowed to apply as civil parties in an international criminal trial and to become a party to the court proceedings alongside the prosecution and the defence. 93 victims participated as civil parties in the tribunal's first case, while 3,850 are participating in case 002. Some of the victims who have given testimony at the court found this to be a difficult experience. Other victims wanted to testify but were not allowed. The compensations received by victims were similarly found by many to be unsatisfactory and futile. Agnieszka Klonowiecka Milart is an International Supreme Court judge at the Extraordinary Chambers of the Courts of Cambodia. We, we were expecting numbers, even though no, not numerically uh, uh, pr um, foreseen uh, with, with precision, but numbers larger than the capacity of our proceedings. We were stuck with limited legal tools and uh, uh, because uh, there were certain difficulties that the uh, trial in case one brought to light mm -hmm. that we tried to address in uh, case two, For like example. the representation of victims. Uh, but this uh, adjustment and this changing rules mm -hmm. uh, caused a degree of frustration among the victims. Indeed, we heard about the activity of NGOs that visited the villages and uh, uh, not just to inform about the uh, court and its proceedings, but also to actively collect applications. As a result of it, we uh, received a number of, great number of applications um, which were poorly uh, prepared on the formal sense. We have appeals that, that um, request that much more would be done. Yes. And these, right. are, these, are, these are requests for projects such as erecting a stupa, such as providing for a health care, such as uh, uh, nominating a, um, a national holiday in the name of the, the victims, mm. uh, such as organizing celebrations mm. uh, in, order, in the memory of uh, victims, such as naming hospitals. So they, they range from something that could be easily done mm. uh, without much financial um, import mm. uh, to uh, very complex and difficult uh, uh, projects that, uh, or demands that um, purport to have healthcare organized uh, for all the victims for uh, free. So Om Katang, Lát tập hợp ba sáu cái đây nông tập tua ban ấy đại ông cái ta chia chia lát tập hợp lắm cái ta ông rồng phăng ban ấy đại vì khoang cả lá cây cắt tóc này thom này ông phăng tha miên là tha miên là phăng tha mẹ mốc à ông ca khay thom chui dơn thẳng ai chẳng nghe ai tàu nó cuốn chui đau được ha chui thơ ai ai mò thơ cái đau ông thơ được ha mình ti pe ai chăng tao cái miền đô miền ai chăng mũi con phân à phải nắng đấy để ai tha dương để khăn pe ăn ta để thầu chui son mà dương với thầu oi chủ tịch chui phải nắng mò phụ ấy tàu hồ ai nã man chờ ấy mà oi làm không phúm con dây nó khơi chăng đang việc khoi thầu đấy không chặt nó con one of the partner NGOs of the tribunal is the transcultural psychosocial organisation TPO Cambodia which provides psychological support to victims and civil parties prior to the proceedings, 
on-site mental health assistance during the trial, monitoring of participants' mental health condition after the trial, and group therapy for victims in need of further support. ຈະກາບັນສະກຸນກຸ່ມຍິນຄັນໃນບ້ານໂຈດສະດັບໃນໄກ່ບັກສາມນາການີ້ ไอ้ก็ลองมาเนาะค่ะโดยใส่ฐานเราแท้เนาะบางจึงไอ้ฐานเต่านี่ก็เจสเตอารอมแต่บ่องใส่ตัดเลิกนุ่งโผล่เน
You cannot forget. You should not forget, but you have to forgive and move on. While most Cambodians are still struggling to find a way to deal with the tragic legacy of the Khmer Rouge, many others are left wondering whether the tribunal is just an unwelcome reminder of the country's darkest moments. A reminder that tears at the wounds of the victims instead of healing them. However, some Buddhist monks express the opinion that justice resulting from the tribunal process can be understood as a part of the natural law of karmic justice, or as common karma, which anyone who violates the laws of the state will experience. This common karma could possibly help victims of the Khmer Rouge in feeling that they receive retribution during this lifetime. In this way, it is possible that the tribunal process and Buddhism reinforce one another. <laughs>